This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to this evening's program. Um, as Laura said, my name is Anna Vanskoik. I work at the Hopewell Branch for the Mercer County Library System. Uh, before we get started tonight, I want to tell you about a couple things that are taking place at uh, the library system at Mercer County. Uh, our summer reading program just started, and we're uh, operating under the theme Oceans of Possibilities. And uh, participants of all ages are welcome. We're talking pre-K through adults. Um, this isn't just for kids. And you can register online uh, or visit your local branch to inquire about registering in person. And basically, you log what books you're reading, and each of the branches are giving away prizes uh, throughout the summer. So I encourage you to take part of our summer reading program. And then, uh, in line with our summer reading program, we have a, a virtual program coming up that is similar to the format that we're using this evening. And it's on Tuesday, June 28th, and it's at two in the afternoon, and it's called Discover Biscayne National Park. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Biscayne National Park is located in Southern Florida, and it spans over 173,000 acres. But what makes this park so unique is that it's comprised of 95% water making it a watery wonderland. So we invite you, invite you to take the opportunity to virtually travel to Biscayne National Park and learn about its four ecosystems, the mangrove forest, Biscayne Bay, the Florida Keys, and the Coral Reef. And again, that is on Tuesday, June 28th, and it is two in the afternoon. And you can either go to our events calendar at mcl.org or download our app if you haven't done that yet, which you can get from your app store, my MCLSNJ. So now for this evening. Tonight we have What's in Your Grocery Cart? And we have Marion Reinson, who is the Executive Director of Eating for Your Health, which is a nonprofit in Princeton, New Jersey, that takes nutrition out of the clinic and into the table where real change happens. Eating for Health educates people about the importance of cooking and eating whole foods for your health. They teach you how to source and prepare delicious and whole food, whole food meals without processed ingredients. The organization works together with a variety of com community partners, including schools, higher ed and adult communities, faith and civic-based organizations, businesses, and other local nonprofits to deliver programs about food and nutrition in an easy to consume and non-judgmental manner, which happens to be one of their foundational pillars. So I'm very excited for the program tonight. And Marion, thank you so much. I'm gonna pass it off to you. Great, thank you for that lovely introduction. And everybody, thank you for being here. Um, I hope that you walk away with a couple of tips that will help you to uh, tackle your grocery shopping in a healthier way. Um, but just first, a, a little bit more about the organization um, Eating for Your Health by Suppers. Um, so we believe, we, so we, our, our mission is to create awareness about eating in a healthier way, understanding the relationship between what you put in your body and how you feel, and also helping you to prevent or reduce the impact of chronic disease, many of which can be food and behavior um, lifestyle related. Um, we believe that every person and every body is unique and that there's no single approach to food that is right for everyone. So we encourage people to explore and experiment and discover the food that works for you, that reflects your taste, your budget, your background, your culture, and, and also understanding, learning what types of healthy food is available to you. We don't advocate any single approach. We don't talk about being vegetarian or, or you know, eating in, in any kind of certain style. But we do ask that you just, uh, we put an emphasis on the importance of, of eating single, whole, fresh ingredients, those things that don't have the, um, the, the nutrition labels on them, um, and avoiding processed foods whenever possible, and really being aware of those added sugars which can pop up in a lot of the foods that we eat. So let me just um, share my screen and get started. Oops. And, okay. <clears throat> 
so basically, I'm going to walk you through um, the grocery store in in, uh, in our in our little uh, presentation tonight. So stocking your kitchen. Well, first of all, when it comes to healthy eating, planning is everything. We all know we have the best intentions, but if you haven't planned or you don't have those healthy ingredients available to you, it makes it that much more difficult to stick to a healthy diet. So it, the, your, your planning can start in the grocery store. So stocking your kitchen and pantry with nutritious, um, the nutritious foods that you need um, takes some planning. And also being sure that you're in a position to kind of resist those other temptations, which means you don't want to go to the grocery store when you're hungry. Um, you always want to make a list and check on what you already have in your house. Look through your pantry, look through your refrigerator. You might find a couple of onions that you didn't know you had. So you're going to the store and purchasing really what you need and not, um, not, not just uh, not buying more than you need because you have things at home or um, or forgetting things that you may have. So having that list is really important. If you're going to be cooking that week, make, checking out a few different recipes before you head out to the grocery store is a good idea and making sure, again, you have what you need on your list. It'll take you less time in the store when you have a list. You're less likely to, to be uh, subject yourself to um, temptations, trying, saying that I, I might want to try something when you know, in fact, if you were thinking, um, knowing that you're really never going to cook something. But we all fall um, into these habits uh, or, you know, make these decisions when we're in the store. And it, it is a gradual process of moving towards eating in a healthy way. Um, so just remember to be kind to yourself. Um, just a little bit of an overview of the pillars of um, eating for your health and the, what informs everything that we do. Um, we ask you to really pay attention to how you feel after you've eaten certain foods, after you've eaten foods in general. There are foods that make you feel, feel satiated for a long time. You're not hungry in another hour. There's um, foods that you eat that might make you want to take a nap in an hour. We ask you to just really pay attention to what you're eating and how those foods make you feel. Because, and as I said before, every body is different. We also understand that every person has their own biological individuality. So the foods that may work for you might not work for somebody else who could be a twin. I actually just had a conversation with somebody where there were twin brothers and one has a lot of food um, intolerances and sensitivities and the other can eat anything that he wants. So when I see um, certain diets being um, recommended for people and prescribing the same amounts and types of food for everybody going through that process, we know that not that every body responds differently and somebody who weighs 220 pounds is going to need to eat different servings than somebody who's 85 pounds. So that biological individuality is what we, um, what we encourage people to just remember. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter if everybody else seems to think it's the best food in the world. If when you eat it, you don't feel right, then your body is telling you that it's not for you. Over time, you'll develop a taste for healthy food. You'll, the, a lot of the foods that are the highly processed foods with a lot of added sugars and salts and crunch are engineered for us to want them and crave them. They aren't really feeding us though. It's with the food that fuels your body are those single ingredients, whole food ingredients that have not been manufactured. Every time a food is processed, a bit of that nutritional value is is processed out. Even when you're you're making your own smoothie, which can be very uh, you know a healthy option, when you are um, when you when you blend up that fruit, the sugars actually become more available. So it's always just a better way to eat your food as whole foods, eating your fruit, not drinking your fruit, and sticking to foods that look as close to as they do in nature. Um, we also help people in supporting their, their desire to eat in a healthy way. Food has emotional ties. Eating is a social 
activity. And when people have made the decision or a decision has been made for them to eat in a healthier way, sometimes it's a lonely journey. And we offer programs to help support people in making that journey towards, um, towards better health. We align with medical practitioners, medical partners, um, healthcare practitioners, chefs, farmers that are in alignment with, um, with, with our uh, value of the importance of cooking and eating whole foods. Nutritional harm reduction is um, another one of our pillars that is about looking, when you look at the way that you're eating, to try to subtract those foods that aren't supporting your health, that you know, they could be either food that has added sugars, a lot of processed foods, a lot of refined uh, wheat products. You wanna subtract those out of your diet and introduce those foods that are supporting your body and your brain in a healthier way. Again, it's a gradual process. So little things can make a big difference. And it even may be, instead of going out and having three pieces of pizza, you have one in a salad. That's nutritional harm reduction. And then everything else, everything that we do is layered over um, non a non-judgmental environment. We know that making a change is, is difficult. And whatever you have been eating, however you have been eating, it just is. But if you're, you want to learn to eat in a healthier way, that's, that's what we're about. So we don't judge if somebody says, well, I just ate a pint of ice cream. It's like, okay, well, you know, is that what you wanted to do? <laughs> so we, we do not judge. Um, we will not tell people what to eat. We tell you what's in the food you're eating. So again, always make a list, all right, everyone over this, um, check your kitchen cabinets, peek in the back. Um, and we all, people have heard this before, that shop the perimeter first. So if you, I, I don't know if you've noticed over the last couple of years, the um, grocery stores have kind of been redesigned. You, they sometimes squeeze you through a little section where the, you, you walk through and there's a floral department and then it opens up and you're in your, your produce department. And they have widened the aisles. They have made more attractive displays. This has all happened during uh, the period of COVID. And it is meant to just entice you to spend more time and experiment with food in the produce department. So we also, we talk about, you've, hear, you've heard about eating the rainbow. And that's a real thing. So um, our phytonutrients are what we get from plants. And different plants and different fruits and vegetables all have different colors. And all of those colors come with different nutritional value. So you want to be eating the, the greatest variety of fruits and vegetables that you can. And by eating the rainbow is a way to do that. So if you have, I have some props here. So if you have tomatoes and you have apples and you ha have a pepper, you want to get a green pepper, you want to get an orange pepper, a yellow pepper, they all have different nutritional value to them. Um, I am just, I'm attracted to purple fruit and vegetables. So if there's a purple cauliflower, I'm going to buy it. I, I like red carrots. So eating that, the, the rainbow is, um, is, is something that, that you want to, you, you want to really look into your cart and say, what am I missing? If you need something orange, you need something red, you have that purple carrot. Um, you, you just want to really mix up what the, the variety that you have, um, that are your, your, uh, fruits and vegetables. And you also want, like, this is also a time to experiment. So we are in the growing season. So there's a lot of really uh, great um, farmer's markets out there that you can explore. And in the grocery store, there might be a lot of different local produce that's available. So try those things and, and try that funky looking fruit that you never had before. And I tried the, the red carrots, which, have a yellow ring inside. They are so pretty and they just make a salad or your food just interesting. There's, I tried to find a watermelon radish for tonight. I, I couldn't find any in the stores, but it looks from the outside, it doesn't, it looks pretty unremarkable. In the inside, it is an absolutely beautiful pink, 
um, inside of a, of a radish and it looks, you know, it has the coloring of the watermelon and the, the pale green on the outside. And it just makes a salad just really just, it brightens it up. And also you always have fresh or try to always have fresh herbs. So fresh parsley, fresh cilantro. I also, whenever I buy them and right now it's still pretty happy leaf season, I'll put them on my counter in a, in a vase or in a glass and then I remember to use them. And they're alive. Like all these plants that we eat are still alive. If you have scallions and you cut off the tops and you put the, you can dry off the bottoms and you can plant them in your garden, you're going to get more scallions. I had broccoli rob on my counter in a vase. It bloomed. Who knew that broccoli rob had yellow flowers? So there's just a lot of surprises that you can get from your produce section. The other thing that, that we talk about is people ask, should I always be eating organic? Well, if you have the option and you have the means and the food is available for you to eat organic, yes, you should eat organic. But if you, it's better to, and this is again, nutritional harm reduction, it's better to eat a fresh piece of produce that's grown conventionally than it is to not eat any at all. So, um, but if you have the opportunity to, to buy organic, of course, do. I will, oh, also, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to be sending you notes about everything that I'm talking about. So you can take notes if you want, but I'm going to be sending you a handout that's pretty detailed with all this information. And in it is um, this list of 30 dozen and clean 15. Every year, the Environmental Working Group, who is a, um, a, a, a a nonprofit that looks at what is in the food and personal products that we we uh, put in, on and in our bodies. Every year they come up with a list of the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15. This is a 2021 list. What I'll be sending you is a 2022 list. But Dirty Dozen means that from, from their tests, they have determined that these top 12 fruits and vegetables are have a lot of... Um, pesticides and other things on them that you don't want to ingest and you're better off either not buying them or buying them organic. The Clean 15 are products that after they or, or produce that after they've been tested, they have determined that there are very low amounts of chemicals on them and they are, are they are fine to eat um, a conventional piece of produce. The Dirty Dozen always has those stone fruits, always has the apples and the strawberries. So it's one of those things that if you, you know, you have to weigh, you do your own nutritional um, harm reduction uh, review of what you want to do. But spend time, experiment, and um, putting together a beautiful salad with some cilantro if you like it, it's not everybody likes it parsley, scallions, oil and vinegar, or oil and, and, and a lemon or lime juice and salt and pepper, and people think that you made the most amazing dressing. And it's really just the freshness of the ingredients that you use. Said before, don't go to the store hungry. It will lead you into temptation that you don't want to, to happen. Somebody had said, if you go to the store hungry, it's kind of like when you go out with some friends and you're just not feeling really good about yourself. Sometimes you just don't make those right decisions um, about what you, what, what you might bring home with you. So we want you to think about when you go to the store, knowing that it might seem like a good idea at the time, but you might regret it later putting that Big thing of Malamars in your cart, which I used to eat a lot, and now I don't anymore. So now we're getting. So we're, we talk about the perimeter. Everybody says yes, we know the perimeter. But what's there's a lot of really good food in the center aisles. So let's talk about nuts and seeds and fats and spices and herbs. So in the aisle, so nuts and seeds are a power punch of nutrition. It's one of those snack foods that we should all be eating. It has that crunch, but it has the nutrition that, that we are looking for. It has a handful of almonds can hold you over much more than a bag of chips. And also in the um, handout that I'll be sending to you is um, the a list of the nutritional value of different nuts and seeds. 
adding chia seeds to to different to a uh, to a um, a yogurt or a smoothie or a salad um, really beefs up your protein. It adds they add fiber. There's um, a, a two two Brazil nuts has uh, the uh, amount, same amount of, of selenium as an egg. And selenium is really important in supporting our immune health. So you can have, just eat two Brazil nuts a day and you'll be giving yourself the recommended daily allowance of selenium. Um, herbs and spices all have medicinal values. We, we um, just recently did a program with our herbalist Tish Streeton. The, so many different herbs and spices have anti-inflammatory value. Um, they they just they they kind of what what Tish has said is the herbs know what to do. So be generous with with using herbs and spices. Add that turmeric to your chili. It doesn't impact the flavor that much if you're using a lot of other flavors. Add add those those herbs and spices to your eggs. Um, so and all of this is found in the center aisles. You also want to look at the, your healthier fats. So a lot of the fats that are seed oils, your corn oil, your sunflower oils, are all heat processed oils and they can cause inflammation. We, are, we suggest that you look to um, the oils that are cold pressed oils, like your olive oil and your avocado oil, and also using coconut oil, which Sometimes you hear that it's a good thing. Sometimes you hear that it's not such a good thing. Um, but moderation is key. So we're not saying use as much um, coconut oil as you possibly can, but it is an option that is a healthier version than some of the other heat processed oils. Um, canola oil is another one of those oils that I'm just, you know, I, I don't use, but it's there isn't any conclusive data that I've seen that they're showing um, with some of the other oils that are heat processed and, and cause inflammation. A lot of times it's not the food that you're frying, it's the oil that you're frying it in that, that can be the problem. Um, even an organic butter is good to use. Again, everything in moderation. So dairy, dairy is one of those, those foods that um, uh, some people can't tolerate and other people aren't sure if they should be doing dairy anymore. Dairy is a really clean, uh, clean protein. Um, it's yogurts are have probiotic uh, properties. They're a fermented food. So dairy isn't off the table. It's, it's, and also full fat versus low fat versus no fat. If, you, if you're eating a low fat or no fat yogurt and you're hungry an hour and a half later, and you're looking for something else to eat, that didn't do its job, what it, how it was supposed to do. So if you're eating a full fat um, dairy product and it holds you for hours, for three or four hours, then you're not thinking about eating and your, your brain isn't distracted by what your feelings of hunger. So that full fat dairy product might be better for you. Everybody has to make their decisions, your own biological individuality. If you know you have some cholesterol issues, you may not want to be um, using those animal products. The other thing that I'm going to send to you is also nutritional information about plant-based milks. All plant-based milks are not alike. There's been this craze about uh, almond milk. Almond milk doesn't have nearly the nutritional value of a cow's milk. The milk that does have the closest nutritional value to cow's milk is soy, soy milk. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll send you the information. You can look at it and decide what is best for you. So, dairy, again, looking at what's in the dairy, looking at ingredients, looking at added sugars. If there's one thing that you remember, I want you to remember that four grams of sugar is a teaspoon. and there's often 16 grams of sugar in a small cup of yogurt. So a lot of us don't intend to eat four teaspoons of sugar with our seemingly healthy yogurt for breakfast. So look at what is, you know, look at those, those food labels and see also what else is added in these products. 
Um, a little later, we'll talk about uh, sugar alcohols, but you want you want to if there's ingredients that you don't recognize as food, it's probably not the healthiest thing for you. So look at what's in look at the amount of sugars. Um, again, four grams of sugar is a teaspoon, and there are 39 grams of sugar in a can of Coke. A lot of people, I don't think, intend on drinking 10 teaspoons of sugar when they have a can of Coke. So being aware of, um, of what is actually in the dairy products that you, you, um, you are consuming. And I guess a, a little bit about the um, sugar alcohols. So a lot of the low, like sugar-free products put sugar alcohols in. And many people can't digest those sugar alcohols, so they think it's the dairy that they ate, when in fact it could be those sugar alcohols that are that are in those foods. We'll talk a little bit about more about that later. <clears throat> so now we're going through the canned aisle and the frozen food aisle. So we we all have limitations as to how much we can store in our in our in our pantry, in our cupboard, in our garage, wherever. So looking at well and, and especially in our refrigerator so and also if you're not sure of what your schedule is and you don't want to buy all this fresh uh produce that you're not sure if you're going to eat frozen is a really good option canned beans are a really good option can throwing in a can a can of peas into something is a good option you want to make sure that there's no added sugars no sauces or anything like that and if you can have it without salt, so you can do the salting yourself, that's always better. But um, I always say, you know, throwing in a bag of frozen peas into something is really great. You need to give peas a chance. And um, let's so so the also the the food that is in the freezer, that's the frozen foods have been. Um, frozen very quickly after they've been harvested. Oftentimes they are more fresh than what is available to you in the winter time. So looking for those, those frozen foods and exploring there as well. I had bought a bag of frozen mushrooms. I would have never bought frozen mushrooms, but I use them, I throw them in soups, I throw them in a, in, in a chili, I throw, you know, what you can use them for, for um, omelets. They're, they're a little mushy but they still have the nutritional value and they still have a great flavor. So I also, when I was doing my uh, panic um, shopping in the beginning of COVID and I was just looking for things that I could put in my freezer, I grabbed a bag of chopped collard greens. Well, they're amazing and you can throw them in a, in a pasta sauce, you can throw them in your chili, I put them in a, if we do a, like a, a, a Mexican kind of wrap, they don't add a lot to the flavor, but they do add that nutritional value of that dark leafy green. And they give you the fiber as well. So looking at um, those uh, frozen and canned vegetables, canned beans, dried beans, and also uh, canned fish. So sardines are a power punch, salmon a power punch. So if you can stock up on those, and you know, make yourself some salmon burgers. We have, we have uh, wonderful recipes for salmon burgers on our website. We have a lot of really great recipes on our website. There's no processed ingredients and no hidden dairy in everything that we do. And, and the sugars or sweeteners that we use are either um, maple syrup, honey, um, stevia, which is an herb and um, is derived from an herb and uh, monk fruit. Um, I tend to use more honey or the, um, the uh, maple syrup, but it's up to you. Um, so that's canned and frozen, still in the middle. And then we go down the treat aisle, which I'm not saying that you can never eat a Malamar again. I'm not saying that you can never eat, you know, something that, that really brings you pleasure again, but moderation is the key. And instead of not, you know, like making yourself feel like you're deprived, just use portion control. Control. Get a smaller container of ice cream, or maybe go out for those treats. Yes, it's probably more expensive to go out for some ice cream or to go out for a piece of cake, but in the long run, 
you're not exposing yourself to eating things that aren't really going to support your health. And for those people, for those of us who are concerned about chronic disease that we know we could be susceptible to, managing those processed ingredients and managing those added sugars really, really makes a difference. Um, yeah, so I can go on about that for, for a while. So your food labels. The things in a box aren't always going to be all bad. So you want to find those food items that have ingredients that you understand what they are. If you don't recognize them, if there's a lot of, of um, labels that you don't recognize, um, there's probably a reason and it's that they're, they're probably not that good for you. Um, you can go into a Trader Joe's or any, any grocery store and pick up two boxes of a cracker and one will have six ingredients, the other may have 26 ingredients. The one with six ingredients, I recognize all of them, well, that's the one that's coming home with me. So look at those, look at what the ingredients are and if there's some, oh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but there's, um, so just also look at the serving sizes because you might buy a small package of something or this happens a lot of times with beverages. You'll buy a bottle of something and you'll look at the calories and you think, oh, okay, I'll, that's fine. And then you look later and it had two and a half servings in it. It wasn't just one serving. So it's there, there can be little tricky things that happen with, with food labels. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're, if, if there's things, again, you don't recognize, it's probably not the best choice. Um, those single ingredient foods, there is no label, well, except those little stickies, which also provides you with information. Um, those little stickers that, that are on produce, the nine means that it is, um, that it's, it's organic. So I would say nine is fine. If it's a four, it's conventional. I think if it's, I don't, I, I, we're actually doing a, a blog post on this. Um, there are other ones that say if it's genetically modified, but four means conventional, nine means means it's organic. So nine is fine. If you look for those, um, those labels, those little labels on these things. But otherwise, this is a pepper and you know what it is. Let's see how we're doing on time, okay. Hidden sugars. So sugar is in everything. I have a salt packet in my car that has dextrose in it. I have no idea why they would put sugar in a salt packet, but they do. So anything with an O's in it, your dextrose, fruit, fructose, um, you, um, you know, uh, what do you, what, there's, oh my goodness, there's just so many things that are called sugar that are sugar that aren't called sugar. So um, if there's any kind of um, fruit juices or syrups or, or any and like anything that again has that os at the end means it's sugar. And I'll look at ingredients sometimes and I'll and it's it's in like three or four different places in the ingredient list. And one says sugar and the other one says something else like molasses or something, but it's all sugar. It's all sugar. And so many sauces, so many dressings, so many things that we don't even think of, of the main part of the, what we're eating are filled with sugar. Um, a lot of takeout has sugar and sugar feeds inflammation. Sugar is, uh, is such a cause of such dis-ease in our body when we have too much of it. So really paying attention to those labels and looking at those, those added sugars and being aware of what you're buying. <clears throat> Misleading claims and those sneaky ingredients. I love when there's like a package of fruit or something and it says it's gluten free. It's like, oh, okay. Well, we know that gluten does not come in peppers, but if you call it gluten free, um, you know, there's things that have, um, that, you know, that are saying that it's, if it's, if it's all natural, well, all natural, sugar is all natural. There's a lot of things that are all natural. 
look at the ingredients, look at the nutritional value. We've also been programmed to look at calories and calories are second to nutritional value. If you're getting something from the food that you're putting in your body, you want to put it in your body. If there's nothing in there but calories and salt and sugar and, and processed ingredients, you're not feeding yourself with it. Your body, your belly may feel full and your brain is saying, you didn't feed me. And then with the sugar going back and forth, your whole body's going, all right, you know, I was hungry, I'm not hungry. I was hungry, I'm not hungry. You get that sugar roller coaster. And I know this is beyond the sneaky ingredients, but it's just paying attention to how you feel when you eat and knowing that um, those, those highly engineered, highly palatable foods that we sometimes crave is has been designed that way and it's not the calories you need to be concerned about as much as it is the nutritional value and you can eat a lot of vegetables and there's not a lot of calories but you're getting so much nutritional value and so much fiber which is also so important in um, in maintaining our health Sugar alcohols, I was saying, um, anything that has a, a tall in it, like xylitol, um, sorbitol, all these atolls are sugar, sugar alcohols. They, the estimate is about a third of the population has some issues digesting um, these, these products. So you might think it's the food that you ate, but really it's the additives that have been put in it. Oh, is that it? Oh, I think, you know, the other aisle that we, we need to talk about is the aisle that has all the digestive aids. So if you're eating something that causes you to need to take something over the counter because you didn't feel well after eating it, that's your body giving you those, those clues. That's your body giving you those cues that whatever you ate didn't work for you. And it can be a healthy ingredient seemingly healthy ingredient, but if it didn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Gut health is another thing that uh, we don't have in the presentation, but our gut health is tied to our overall health. Our gut starts when you put your, it starts with your mouth and ends where everything leaves, and it touches every single organ in your body. And feeding our gut with healthy ingredients is what we, we need to be doing. And if you have been on any kind of uh, antibiotic regimen, it's even, it's really important to feed those healthy bacteria, put those healthy bacteria back into your gut because the antibiotic can't tell the difference between what is a healthy bacteria and what is a, a, a detrimental bacteria. So it kills them all. And then you need to feed, you need to put them uh, back in your body, which is why they often say to eat yogurt, um, if you are on antibiotics, but having fermented foods as part of your regular diet is just a, a, a it's, it's just good for your health. And eating a forkful of fermented sauerkraut a day is all you is, is really what you need. Um, and if you don't like sauerkraut, if you like um, kombucha and you, or what, whatever whatever the fermented food is, fermented foods are so important. For your gut health and your gut health is related to your brain health it's related to your overall health um, so listen to your gut if it's telling you that something didn't work then it didn't work somebody had asked me if she said is um does can fresh spinach make you gassy and i said well are you asking if it makes me gassy or if you're asking if it makes you gassy because it doesn't make me gassy but it absolutely can make you gassy and if you don't feel well after you ate it then your body's telling you something. And nightshades are another um, group of foods that people can be sensitive to. So it's dairy, gluten, nightshades, and well, dairy, gluten, and nightshades tend to be um, the groups of foods that people have sensitivities to. So tomatoes and peppers are, are you know, they're, they're wonderfully delicious and, and potatoes, foods, but if you're sensitive to nightshades, they're not. It's, it's a, you might like it, but it doesn't like you. So listen to your body instead of just going down that aisle and trying to put a band-aid on on that symptom. 
really look at, at that source. And it could be something that you ate a couple of days ago. So just paying attention to how, you know, how you feel after you've eaten. And when you start to, re to really add more of those, those types of foods that feed your body and your brain and work on eliminating those other foods that don't, you'll begin to just see and feel a difference. And those will be the foods that you want to crave. I am happy to take questions. Marianne, thank you so much. And I do want to um, invite everybody that, that does have a question um, to please feel free to enter them into the chat so I can relay that uh, question to Marianne. Um, oh, the other thing I, I forgot about is containers. So, you know, if you can buy things in a glass jar or, or like there's times when I'm, I'll spend a little more money on a, on a jar that's a really great jar that I can then use to store my food in. So, you know, just paying attention to those, you know, there's, there's books that have been written about how to um, de detoxify your home. So if you can store in glass and use, you know, use those containers, but also looking at that when you're buying a product, because that's kind of like a value add. So, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. You actually brought up something that um, that I had a question about is you just talked about books that were available. Is there like a book or two that that you would say is kind of your your go to that you refer to? I don't I not. I don't have one now, but I can um, I know that we there there is a detox book by Dr. Ailey Cohen that um, I can give you the link for. Um, I will ask Dr. Addie Benito, who is our chief medical advisor. Um, for some suggestions, and yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot out there. I know I, you know, there is a lot, right? And so I let me that that's and it's a library. We should I should be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will I will get a list of there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good books out there, and then there's just you know your cookbooks too. So, but we do have recipes. We have wonderful recipes. So. I will work um, all the books. I did. I linked to the recipe site on the Eating for Your um, Eating for Your Health webpage, um, but I will include that in a follow-up email as well with our participants. Um, and if people of, want to turn on their I mean, can people turn on their cameras or no? It's it's. I think um, it's probably a small enough group. If people want to turn on their cameras, uh, Laura, I don't know. We might have to ask Laura if they've got the um, the privileges to do that. Oh, they do. So you are free to turn on your cameras at this point. Um, there is a question that's come in uh, about going back to the smoothies. Uh, the participant thought that you, she heard you say, the more ingredients you add to the smoothie, the fewer nutrients you get. Is that what you no, had said? No, 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 okay. sorry, no. No, what, so what you wanna do is, is make sure that when you're, you're um, putting your smoothie, the ingredients together for your smoothie, that you're not loading it up with fruit. The fruit in a smoothie is really what is there to make it palatable. So um, you're much better off eating a piece of fruit than drinking three pieces of fruit. Um, so you want to make sure that it, what's in your smoothie has, you, if you have some protein in there, whether it's a nut butter or nuts or chia seeds, um, whatever milk product you want to put in there or yogurt, some, some leafy greens, and then it's the fruit to make it palatable. But when you add fruit to a smoothie and the, the um, you know, when, when you blend it all up, the sugars in the fruit become more readily available. So it's more like juice than eating your fruit. Mm. So, so that's where you just want to make sure that it's enough in there that it's, it tastes good. Um, because really who, you know, it, it's, you can add also herbs in there to make it, it taste fresher, but um, we need to be careful about the amount of fruit and also in fruit juices. That's another area that has yeah. a lot of sugar. When a woman, a pregnant woman is tested for gestational diabetes, they will give her a glass of orange juice. There's probably six to eight teaspoons of, of sugar in a glass of orange juice. Um, you don't want to be drinking your sugar. So um, smoothies are great. Just be careful with how much fruit you put in them. 
it's a quick, healthy way. We always get people like, don't touch my smoothie. That's right. <laughs> well, they, it's, a, it's a quick and it, and it can be a healthy way to start your day. Absolutely. It absolutely well, is. Yeah, and I loved at the beginning of your um, program how you talked about it's a gradual process. I feel like so many times we try to go, you know, do a quick cut the cord, and 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 I do think it's gradual. And I love the idea of looking to see what I already have in the kitchen at home. Um, and I liked how you talked about how how you feel is data to use. Like you were talking about the spinach earlier, how it might be with one person, it might be something completely different with another. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to the whole plant-based milks question that um, mm -hmm. has come up. And I realize, I, I'm assuming that a lot of it came through the industry because people were having um, adverse reactions to cow's milk or somehow cow's milk became known as being bad for people. Um, and I know you said there's not one that's better than another, um, but I mean, are, there, there, there is, if you're looking to replace the nutritional value of a cow's milk with another okay. milk, a plant-based milk product. So that's why I will, uh, I'm going, well, you know, I, I can, I mean, if we have time and I can share that, that little handout. Okay. Um, it's interesting because neither one of my, and I'm thinking of kids, I'm thinking of my, like those of us who have families and feeding our mm -hmm. kids. I know neither one of my kids like cow's milk anymore. They love the plant-based milk. They actually like oat milk. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they like oat milk, but that's what they like. And we did do soy milk for a while, but again, it just depends on the brand you get. And if you get the vanilla, then there's added sugars in that. And you really have do have to kind of monitor that. I mean, just because it says soy and organic doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best choice for you. Exactly. Exactly. So so here we're looking at cow's oh, this milk. Is nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like I said, I'll be sending this to everybody. Um, and, you know, you're looking, you look at your calories, right? But really you want to look at your protein. And, you know, you want to look at, at Interesting. Well, really, I mean, it's it's a it's a source of protein. Like that's why we're drinking milk. Um, so when you look at the difference if, if you're drinking a cow's milk versus an almond milk, it's not the same. You know, there's and then you know looking at your your fat contents, but it's really you know and the amount of carbs. Um, you know, that's where looking at it and saying, is this right for me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and why and why are you doing it? Um, you know, is it because of the amount of sugar that's in cow's milk, clearly, you know? Um, so it's really depending, but it's, but it, you're not, it isn't really, it's not a replacement. Um, it's just another whitener, you know? Like, well, like, the chart is interesting because I assumed almond milk, I don't know why, I guess because it's from a nut, that it would have more protein, but the chart says something very different. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's almond juice. Yeah. <laughs> it's really almond juice. You know, like that's what you're, if you make your own nut milk, like it's, you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's really, again, those, the, if there's like zeros in all the nutritional value of something, yeah. it's zero in the nutritional value. It's a food like substance. It's not a food. Um, there was another healthy. question that had come through, uh, kind of talking about the gut health, and you had mentioned the kombucha. Is there like a hard, there's like a rule or some type of guidance to use with like, is it a half a bottle a day? Is it, I mean, is, or is it just going by yourself and how you feel? It's going by yourself and how you feel. Um, you know, it really, if you have a little bit every day, you're feeding your gut. If you're eating those, you know, those probiotics, you're feeding your gut. Prebiotics are feeding the probiotics. So it's, you know, it's just that mix of, uh, you know, there is, there is no one real, well, a dietitian can tell you what you need. Right. Um, what you need, like what, what, what you, what you what yeah. You, what, what you need. Uh, but I don't think anybody's, you know, again, some people say I can't eat sauerkraut. Some people say they can't eat yogurt, and and that means that they can't. So you try and find something else that something. you can that is from the that the you know fermented foods probiotic, um, you know food group because it it is uh, every culture has it. You know whether it's it's fermented pickles. Right. Um, you know, every culture has that fermented food. Many cultures outside the U.S. always have pickled items that are fermented on their table um you know the american diet is just a little 
it's it's not it's it's just different than the way a lot of other people eat around the world. Our breakfast foods are crazy. It's all it's so many it's all refined flours and sugars and sweeteners and other people don't eat that. Yeah. You know, it's there's 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 better ways and better ways to feed feed yourself. So yeah, so this is what I'll be sending you all. Um, and it has here's the uh, nutritional value of different nuts. You'll see the um, let's see the well pumpkin seeds are really good, and the chia seeds are really good. So just having them around, you know, making that easy an easy thing to grab. And and then everything else here, like I said, it's oh that looks wonderful. Thank yeah, you. I'm glad that you'll be sharing that with us, so I can so we can submit that to our participants. That's very kind. Cool. And I'm getting lots of thank yous, and great, you're doing great work. And I and I I do I I just appreciate the mission of eating for your health and and what you are doing and making it accessible um, to everybody. Know. So That's... it's a valiant effort, definitely. <laughs> and much needed. It really is. Well, you know, it's it's when you start thinking about the way humans are supposed to eat, with the way they used to eat, which was hunting and gathering. You know, you didn't eat meat all the time because it wasn't easy. So you had to stock up in nuts and seeds and you would plant your own or gather your own. And that's the way humans are supposed to function. So there's, you know, there's promise. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And I want to thank everybody for um, attending this evening. Uh, I do want to uh, remind you to look and see uh, other programs that are coming up, as well as our summer reading program. I've put the links in the chat. And I will be sending out, um, as Marion has said, she's going to be uh, giving us some documents I'll be able to pass on to you. And I will pass on some websites as well and other things that were talked about this evening. So again, Marion, thank you so much. Thank you and for having me. Absolutely. And I want to thank Laura Narasik, who was behind the scenes making sure everything ran smoothly. Thank you so much, Laura. And again, everyone have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you.